The following video is sponsored by MobileMaddenCoins.com. If you're looking for Madden coins on any console or platform, be sure to check out MobileMaddenCoins.com. Use code CLICKWID for a 10% discount. Hey, what is going on guys? Clickwood here back again with another Madden 17 budget series episode. Guys, the position that we're going to be taking a look at today is cornerback. Now, obviously this is a position that's extremely important in, in Madden. The opposing team is almost always going to be passing a ton. It's very rare that you're going to run into somebody that actually has a run first offense. So cornerback is definitely one of the most important positions to shut down the opposing wide receivers and get some interceptions and things like that. So what we're going to be doing today again, guys, like we always do, is taking a look at some cheaper guys that you can put into your lineup that are still going to do a pretty good job for you. And also guys that you may want to use for your salary cap lineups as well. So with that said, guys, let's take a look at the first comparison. On the left side of your screen, we have Orlando Skandrick, the gold card. This is an 81 overall. We're going to be comparing him to the 87 overall Chris Harris Jr. Um, obviously, the Chris Harris is an elite card. The price difference between these cards is also pretty big. Obviously, you've got Orlando Skandrick for about 5,000 coins and Chris Harris all the way up there at 60,000 right now. Now, obviously, these prices are going to fluctuate a little bit with time. Uh, so if you're watching this three months from the time that this video is created, these prices are probably not going to be that accurate. But again, we're taking a look at the ones that we have for now that are a decent price. So uh, with that being said, guys, obviously, when you're taking a look at these attributes here on your screen, if it's a green attribute, that means that the player is better in that attribute. Uh, if it's a red attribute, obviously it means that the player is worse in that attribute. So, um, and then obviously if they're yellow, they're the exact same. So again, guys, what we're going to try and do here is take a look at guys that are cheaper, but still going to do a pretty good job for you. And that's what I think Orlando Skandrick pretty much personifies. If you take a look at his attributes here, guys, he is very, very good in a lot of things that we really look for when we're trying to find a good cornerback. I mean, first of all, the man coverage attribute is really the most important thing when we're talking about man coverage corners. And that's what both these guys, I guess, I, I would consider them to be. Um, they're a little bit higher in man coverage than they are in zone coverage. And they're both a 91, so they're very, very good in that attribute. Starting the game, I mean, a 91 man coverage is definitely up there among the best in the game. Uh, there are very few guys that are better than that that are in the game at the moment. The other thing is that Orlando Skandrick's actually quite a bit faster than Chris Harris as well. I mean, if you look at just the pure speed, he's only one higher, but the acceleration, he's actually four higher. And that's extremely important, guys. When you're talking about man coverage, you got to make sure that your guys are fast because they have to keep up with some of the faster players on the opposing team when they're doing slant routes or they're going deep or they're doing corner routes, things like that. They've got to be able to, to keep up with the guys and not get burned. I, I mean, if the guy has good man coverage, but he's 70 speed, doesn't matter. He's still going to get just toasted every single play. So that's what I like about Skandrick because he does have the speed, the acceleration, and the man coverage. He also has an 82 for press, which is very good. Now, a lot of people don't realize this. I did a video last year that actually showed that press coverage did not matter. Like, your attribute for press was completely irrelevant. Like, almost, I shouldn't say completely. It was, it was like 2% relevant. It barely mattered at all. But this year, it's actually not that way. Uh, I might end up doing a video on this. Um, I actually saw a uh, breakdown, a statistical, bre statistical breakdown by the same guy who did last year's, uh, and it really showed that press coverage does matter. So at some point, I might do a video on that. Potentially, we'll see. But for right now, just know that press coverage definitely matters this year. It's very important. So uh, press is important for man coverage, of course, as well. Um, and, and keeping in mind as well that... Orlando Skandrick has some pretty good run stuffing attributes as well. They could take a look at his tackling, his hit power, both a little bit higher than uh, than Chris Harris's. They're the same in strength. So, I mean, this card is actually pretty damn good overall. Though areas where it's not very good, catching and catching traffic, it's just not good in those two things. 55 for catching and only a 40 for catching traffic. Those are pretty terrible attributes. But again, I mean, not every cornerback every time is going to get an interception. So, I mean, it's just, it's kind of a balancing act. We don't really know at this point how much catching actually matters for getting interceptions. So, it's really hard for us to break down exactly how important it is. But it is worth noting that he's not very good in those two things. Awareness and play recognition, he also lags a little bit behind in. But again, for 5,000 coins, you're talking about a corner that has great man coverage, great speed, great acceleration. Um, and, and he also has decent tackling and hit power as well. 
So, I mean, I, I really think that this is a great value at the cornerback position. I think you guys can do a lot worse than Orlando Scandrick at corner. Uh, he's definitely one of the guys that I want to put on my team, especially if I'm doing a, a, um, a salary cap team because he is not very expensive either. So definitely something to keep in mind there, guys. Now, the next one that we're going to take a look at here uh, is a little bit different because we're looking at actually zone coverage cornerbacks. So on the left side of your screen, the guy that we have on the screen uh, is Malcolm Butler, and we're going to be comparing him to Josh Norman. Now, Josh Norman, this is the, the 89 version of Josh Norman. It's not the one that's the uh, the 92 version that you get from doing those solo challenges, or you got. I don't know if they're actually still available or not, but this is the one that's actually pullable. 70,000 coins for the Josh Norman. Now, I'm not going to sit here and act like the Malcolm Butler is as good or better than Josh Norman. It's not. I mean, I, I think you look at the attributes and you can pretty easily see that Josh Norman pretty much blows him out of the water in just about everything. But what I will say again is that you're comparing a card that's 3,000 coins to a card that's 70,000 coins. So what we really want to see is how different these attributes are. And actually, in most things, they're not that much different. Like, really the biggest things are awareness and play recognition where uh, Malcolm Butler is eight behind Josh Norman. And then also if you take a look at like his man coverage is four lower and his zone coverage is four lower and his press is six lower. But other than those things, they're actually quite similar to one another in most of the other attributes. Speed, acceleration, strength, tackling, hit power, they're all pretty similar in those things. Malcolm Butler is actually a little bit higher in jumping and a little bit higher in tackling as well. So uh, he can come up and help with the run support, which is, I think, nice to have in a cornerback this year, especially with all those outside stretch runs and things like that. You need your corner to be able to make the tackle. So uh, Butler can definitely do that for you. Now, again, I'm not saying that Malcolm Butler is going to be as good as Josh Norman, but we're really just taking a look at a guy that's 3,000 coins. I mean, he's super, super cheap. So if you're just getting started on your ultimate team or if you're, uh, you know, wanting a, a team to run solos with, Malcolm Butler is definitely going to do a good job for you. The other thing that I like about him is that he actually has a pretty decent catching attribute. 73 for catching is actually almost as good as Chris Harris was on the last scene. So again, very, very similar uh, to Josh Norman in a lot of attributes. He's going to be able to get turnovers and things like that as well. So if you're looking for a zone coverage corner, I think you can do a lot worse than Malcolm Butler. He's, he's definitely a good option for you. Next on the list, guys, we have guys that I would call, I guess, run support and blitzing cornerbacks. These are very, very situational cornerbacks because I would not want to have the left side of the screen guy, William Gay, on the, on the field for me. Unless I'm blitzing with him or if I know for a fact that the opposing team is going to be running the ball a lot. So uh, in with that, obviously, the things that we're really looking for with these guys, we want some speed and acceleration always. That's important. Um, but we also want to make sure that we have good block shedding, strength, tackling, and hit power. And William Gay definitely, definitely does that. Uh, you compare him to Janoris Jenkins on the right side of your screen, who's 70,000 coins. Now, obviously, Janoris Jenkins is a much more balanced player. He's got good coverage attributes. William Gay is actually trash in man coverage. He's 72 for man coverage. I mean, there are linebackers that are better than that. And zone coverage, he's only an 82. So he's really not good in either of the attributes, to be completely honest. But he is good in press. He is good for block shedding. And he is great for strength, tackling, and hit power. He's among the very best players in the game right now at the position. And he's only 1,000 coins. So again, if you're sending the, the blitzes out of the, out, of, out of the nickel or the dimes where you got a cornerback coming off the edge, and those are some of the most effective blitzes this year, by the way, guys. William Gay is a very, very nice option. I would highly, highly recommend him for that because, again, the hit power that he has in the tackling, he is going to be able to get in there, hit the quarterback, and force fumbles, which is very, very important, as you guys know, this year. So uh, with that being said, we've got... We've talked about run support and blitzing corners. We've talked about zone coverage corners, and we've talked about man coverage corners. Now the position that I want to take a look at here, or the style, is what I call balanced coverage cornerbacks. So we're going to do two of these here. And the first set that we're going to be taking a look at here on the left side of your screen, we have Jonathan Joseph, and we're going to compare him to the 88 overall Patrick Peterson. Now, Jonathan Joseph has been a budget corner for quite a few years now. I believe he was in both Madden 15 and Madden 16 uh, from my budget series, 
and he's been very, very good at the beginning of the year just about every single time, and there's no difference this year. You take a look at the 92 man coverage and the 88 zone coverage, he's actually higher than Patrick Peterson in both of those attributes. That is pretty damn surprising, and it's very, very important to remember because Jonathan Joseph is 8,000 coins versus Patrick Peterson being 90,000 coins. Now, I'm not going to sit here again and tell you that Jonathan Joseph is necessarily better overall than Patrick Peterson, but I think that the price difference doesn't necessarily indicate how close these guys are. They're very, very close in a lot of these attributes. I mean, and especially if you take a look at things like awareness and play recognition for Jonathan Joseph. He's got an 89 in both of those, whereas Patrick Peterson's only an 83. I mean, that's a pretty huge difference. It really is. It's very, very big. And it, when you're talking about zone coverage corners, those guys definitely have to know their player recognition. They have to have decent awareness. And even for man coverage, being able to spot when the, the opposing wide receiver is going to be cutting is important. And those attributes will help you in those things. So uh, my opinion, again, Jonathan Joseph is a pretty damn good overall corner. He doesn't have great hit power, though, for sure. Uh, his strength and tackling aren't that spectacular either. So he's not great in run support. But when you're talking about a guy who can do both man and zone coverage with decent speed and decent acceleration... Jonathan Joseph is definitely worth having on your roster right now. He's an 83 overall. He doesn't cost a lot. And I think he could honestly be a cornerback one for most teams right now. So uh, certainly consider him when you're taking a look at your cornerbacks right now. Uh, he's definitely a great value at the moment. Now, last but not least, we have another set of balanced cornerbacks. On the left side of your screen, we've got Vontae Davis. The right side of your screen, we have Kyle Arrington. Uh, obviously, Vontae Davis is another one who has been a budget corner for quite a few years now. Uh, he does end up getting elite cards throughout the year typically, but his, even his initial base gold cards have been very, very good. And if you take a look at this one, again, it's no different. Very, very nice attributes for uh, speed, acceleration, and then you take a look at his awareness and play recognition. Both those things are pretty damn good as well, but where he makes his money is press. He is a 93 for press. That is excellent. And again, I talked about it earlier in the video. Press actually matters this year. So I definitely like Vontae Davis. He's a great value at only 9,000 coins. You combine him with Jonathan Joseph. You throw in a William Gay for blitzes. You throw in some of these other guys for situational uh, downs. And you're talking about having a very nice set of cornerbacks on your team for like 20,000 coins total. So I definitely like the value that all these guys bring to the table. Um, again, Vontae Davis has some areas where he's not good. Block shedding, he's pretty much complete trash in for whatever reason. I, I don't know why they disrespected him that much with the block shed, but, you know, it is what it is. But again, he has great attributes where it really counts. His zone coverage is one thing that I will say is pretty low at only an 83. So if you are using Vontae Davis, I recommend manning him up as often as you can so you can take advantage of his better coverage attribute. But... Even if you have to use him in zone coverage, 83 isn't horrendous. It's just not great. So uh, anyways, guys, that is going to do it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, do me a quick favor and drop a like on the video. And guys, also, let me know in the comment section below, are there cornerbacks that you guys are really liking this year that you're utilizing that are cheap? If there are, or if there are any, go ahead and let me know in the comment section below. And of course, if you guys can help me out by sharing this video on various social media platforms, I would greatly appreciate it. Thanks so much. Be sure to drop a like and subscribe if you're new, and I will talk to you guys again soon.